Hello, I'm Ruth Allen. I'm the Chief Executive of Bowser and uh, I'm delighted to be joined today for this short blog by Denise Turner. Hello, Denise. Hi, Ruth. Thanks ever so much for inviting me today. Um, my name's Denise Turner. I'm a lecturer and a registered social worker, but I'm here today to talk about our book as editor of this book. Fantastic. Thanks, Denise. And, and I'm delighted to have played a small part in the book. Um, could you tell us a little bit um, about how it came about? It's a book about life in COVID and ex the experiences of social workers and students and views about that. Could you tell us a bit more about how it came about and the authors? Yeah, well, thanks, Ruth. First of all, thank you so much for your part in the book, because you wrote the, the lovely foreword, um, which starts with um, what did you do in the pandemic, which I think really sets the tone for the book, because the idea is that it, it will live in posterity, I suppose, as, as something that people will be able to look back on and see what the experiences of social workers and social work students and practitioners and we have also an expert by experience in the book and um, what their experiences were very much during the first lockdown in the UK actually because the book came about in about April last year uh, we had started up a little sort of virtual wall that connected people in social work during the first lockdown and uh, people started posting all sorts of things on the wall pictures of their pets, pictures of their daily walks, some sound of the bird that they heard. And, and I just thought, actually, I think we need a book that, that fulfills a similar purpose that just captures some of the experiences. So at the time, of course, we didn't know what was going to come. We thought that what we refer to as the lockdown in the book was the lockdown. We didn't realize it was going to be the first lockdown of many. And I suppose we didn't realize how long it was going to go on for. But having said that, I think that there are still chapters in the book that are very, very relevant to what we're experiencing now. And there are threads that run all the way through the chapters. So one of those is, is very much around the digital um, and what you and I are doing here today, Ruth, kind of connecting remotely for all its problems. Um, and we have chapters on loss and bereavement we have a wonderful chapter written by Varsha Taylor, who is a, an expert by experience about living with disability during the first lockdown. Uh, we have chapters on black African students experience of the pandemic. We have mm -hmm. students themselves experience of the pandemic. Something that's been really very relevant in the news this week is around asylum seekers and, and refugees. So we have um, a chapter on that as well and two chapters towards the end around loss and bereavement. So there are, you know, there are threads in the book, despite how early it was written, that are still coming up in the media and are still very, very relevant today. Yeah. And I, I suppose the last thing to say is just that the, the authors did a fantastic job in getting these chapters uh, so quickly together. We, we first thought about it in around April um, and, sort of big shout out to the publisher, Critical Publishing, who really ran with this book. And the authors, despite everything else that was going on, all had their chapters to me by August last year, 2020. So it was a, a really collaborative effort. And I suppose something that uh, as editor seems to me to capture some of the spirit of collaboration that's been going on. Yeah, absolutely. And also that spirit, I think we've seen of people wanting to write yeah. and actually create things during this very difficult time. I know there's also a great, for instance, a, a chapter about poetry and the use of creativity yes. um, during this time. When we were talking earlier um, about the fact that all of the pieces were written early in that first lockdown, I was quite surprised actually. I didn't, because I came in a little later, because um, it felt like it was relevant um, absolutely through to all of the stages actually that we've, mm. we've gone through and of course to this this lockdown that we're in at the moment. So the themes that emerged early in that first experience of lockdown and the, and, and the pandemic hitting, I feel like they've continued to me. Um, I don't know if it feels like that to you. I think it absolutely does, Ruth. And I suppose that's something that I've been very pleased about because 
it did its inception was quite early on and then I suppose when in 2020 we were getting the messages around it's all going to be over by Christmas in the UK and mm -hmm. you know eat out to help out and a lot of the schemes that there were as if it had all gone away then I, I I did have a couple of wobbles where I just thought actually have I got everybody to write these chapters and do this work and this book's just gonna not be relevant um at all but I suppose that's the double-edged sword isn't it because it is still I think it is still horribly relevant actually mm -hmm. and um you know the themes as you say the chapter around poetry which is very much about sort of finding hope really and creativity and self-help and and all the other chapters are are extremely relevant still so yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, absolutely. And one of the chapters that I'd particularly like to talk to you about is your chapter, um, the chapter um, about bereavement, loss and dying, which, of course, is your area of research and practice over a long period. Mm. And this week we hit the awful milestone of losing over 100,000 people to COVID in the UK. I wondered if you'd like to say a bit more about that chapter and about how how the how our experiences obviously during during COVID-19 but also how it's maybe changing uh, our understanding our cultural perceptions and the way we have to talk about death dying loss and bereavement during these uh, awful times actually and of course you relate in your chapter the importance of social works engagement mm. social work in this field um, which is obviously your background as well. Mm. Yes, I mean, thanks. Thanks again, Ruth. Um, in the chapter, I, I talk about Peter Maris's book, Loss and, Loss and Change, which was a, a big book when I did my social work training, which is more years ago than I like to think about. Um, and at that time, social work, Loss and Change were very much at the heart, actually, of social work and then seemed to um, seem to sort of move off the curriculum. Um, for social work students to a large extent and I, I suppose you know part of my argument in the book is that in my chapter in the book is that actually for me I think loss and change are at the heart of, of everything that we do in social work all of life is about some form of loss and some form of change um, positive or, or not so positive so I suppose it's been very interesting for me because I I do a lot of training as well around um, bereavement and loss and um, I've been doing some training for some of the local authorities and the the death toll that they faced and the losses that they faced is is really quite overpowering at times and they're having to get on with that you know they're having to get on with their work and and they're making some space for staff voices to be heard so one of the things that I've often talked about in the past is how death is sequestered. You know, it's a, a, a bit removed, certainly in in sort of mainstream UK culture, whatever that is. It's kind of um, we tend to to not be so good at talking about death, and and now all of a sudden we're confronted with it. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed is the media reporting of that. There have been some very powerful reports by Clive Murray on the BBC in the UK um, where he's you know gone to a mortuary um, mm -hmm. and and things reporting like that which I don't remember ever seeing actually before so I think we are being inevitably confronted with death in a way that to use that awful word Ruth is it's kind of unprecedented actually <laughs> in in my lifetime and I think that you know it will it will mean that we have to think more about these things, I think, and we have to embed them um, into our experiences as a profession. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the other thing that is very much in my chapter is around thinking culturally around that, how very different cultural practices demand different responses from us, you know, so those cultures that have a sort of 50 day mourning period or, or or those that need to wash the body immediately after death, those kind of um, practices we we think about and we and we are much more aware of in embedding in our practice, even when sometimes that doesn't fit our sort of very Western Christian kind of model of, of what death and funerals should look like. So mm -hmm. 
I suppose I think, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to seem trite, I suppose, but I suppose there are opportunities here for us to think much more deeply about things that perhaps we haven't, we haven't thought about so much in the past. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, and it's, it's hugely important, isn't it, that as, as people and as a profession, that we can speak about what is happening, um, that we can talk about things that might be happening to us, happening mm -hmm. to people we, we know and care about, happening at a large scale across society in a way that um, m most of us who've grown up in, in British society haven't ever experienced. Yeah. Of course, people have got all sorts of experiences who live in British society yes. and they've seen it elsewhere, actually. There's a lot to be learned there. And I think so much to be learned by talking about, um, about our experiences during the pandemic generally, um, but also the fact that, yes, different cultural experiences, different life experiences mean that we're, we're, we're in interpreting and understanding what's going on now in the pandemic in different ways. Mm. The book also, of course, covers um, quite a lot about the huge inequalities that, were, again, were already evident during that first lockdown mm. about who is most affected by, by severe illness, by getting the, the disease in the first place, by death. Um, and by other strains that, that come with being in the pandemic. And, and the book does cover that. And I think your, your chapter also um, absolutely picks up on the, the importance of understanding how this is a very different experience, depending on who you are, the community that you live in, the ethnicity, your level of poverty, yeah. um, or affluence, and all of those, all of those matters. Um, I think the book covers that well, and that relates directly to our experience of bereavement. Um, I, yeah, I found the chapter on bereavement um, really, really helpful, actually. Um, Thank you. I was reading it um, when the book actually came out. So the book was published this year, 2021, from Critical Publishing. Um, and um, I, was, I was reading it, and just as we were approaching the 100,000 deaths marker, mm -hmm. and it felt like having open and explicit discussion of those issues and their implications for us as people and social workers was, was really important. So I found it um, found it helpful to, you know, we're all seeking meaning, aren't we? And I think mm. you talk about that in the chapter as well, don't you? About the meaning seeking that is that is all about understanding um, how we deal with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's a that's a, a much more sort of contemporary grief theory. I think a lot of people know a lot about Kubler Ross's stages, and um, but I think it's it's very helpful. To think about meaning and and um, you know how we make not in a sort of trite way so that we have to come out with some sort of you know positive meme or something but I think just to think about how we do construct some sort of collective meaning from what we're going through because I think I think that's that's enormously important and I, I suppose I'd say Ruth that the book the book plays its part in that you know I think and and coming back to your foreword you know the what what did you do in the pandemic that is part of constructing that collective meaning because I think you're right I think the threads in the book are still very powerful and and I was thinking as you were talking about um we have a, a chapter written by students one of one of the students is a black African student who um contracted COVID during the first wave and talks about his experience of living in, in, in quite crowded accommodation with three children, with his partner who also had COVID, trying to work, trying to do his, his um, academic work and trying to self-isolate at the same time. And you know, when I read the chapter, I was actually in tears over it um, because it, it was such a sort of humble <laughs> account that he gives of trying to do his best. And, um, and yet it sounds absolutely you know, dreadful what, um, what he was facing and and I suppose you know for him at least he had some technology as well so when we talk about the digital that also means that people have to you know have to have some form of technology mm. in order to connect and and as we know very well not everybody does and there's also um, a chapter in the book written by Varsha Taylor who is is a woman living with MS where she talks about for example, not being able to get her shopping delivered anymore because she was no longer considered a priority mm. during the first wave. So um, those inequalities are there throughout the book in, in many of the chapters, I think, even if they're not foregrounded. Yeah. Well, th 
Thanks. Um, thanks very much, Denise. Thanks for joining me today and talking more about it. I do think it's a really useful, uh, touching um, and helpful book um, for, for us as social workers. And I think more widely than that, actually, because it's very human. It's also Thank written you. really accessibly. Yes. And I think people should, I hope people would want to pick it up because um, uh, and there's some lovely reflection points at the end of each of the relatively short chapters. And I think that's just the sort of I find it very nourishing, actually. Oh, and I hope that people will find that as well. So um, it's called Social Work and COVID-19 Lessons for Education and Practice, edited by Denise Turner, published by Critical Publishing. And I think it's um, a really helpful contribution to our reflections and understanding of of what we're going through and what we've been through, what we will go through. So yes. thank you again very much, Denise. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you so much for all your time. And, and could I just also thank every one of the authors who, who produced these chapters so quickly and also to the publishers for running with it so quickly as well. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.